Hi everyone, this is a continuation of the word that I gave um, two days ago. Um, so today is Monday, January 9th. And <coughs> God was having me rewatch that video and talking about familiar spirits. And so this is kind of like a part two to that video where he wanted me to go a little deeper into what what to expect um, when you're dealing with a familiar spirit. Uh, when you... So, for the, some of us, and I say us because to me, my brothers and sisters that are true believers of Jesus Christ, we're all together in on this. Um, whether it, you know, I've come out of my wilderness doesn't mean that all that experience that I went through goes out the window. That experience is meant to help someone who maybe they're struggling with understanding what the wilderness is or their times and seasons. Um, back in November, or no, back in October uh, of 2022, God had given me the sensation of researching the Jewish calendar and what the different months mean. And in all the things that I was doing, I got a little sidetracked and I forgot that instruction. I did start it, but I didn't continue it. And so he reminded me through a prophet that said, hey, if you're not doing this, you need to get back on it. And I'm like, oh, that's right. He did have me doing this. So the reason that he has us look through certain research is because our specific experience that we went through will help someone else who is having a similar um, reaction or a similar feeling as we did when we were going through that situation and by providing our um, our experience by providing our knowledge by providing the things that we went through our testimonies it will help the other individuals who are in that moment understand that it's okay they're okay they're not off the beaten path they're not being punished or they're this is just a natural cycle um, when I was going through my wilderness I had no idea that I was in my wilderness I thought my walk with God was you know that everything I was going through was because that's what he wanted me to go through well it turns out that I had to experience the bloodline curses I had to experience the, the witchcraft I had experienced all those things so that when I was on the other side you know when I came out when I went through my exodus period then I'd be able to look back and say oh and recognize where what was happening in the in through that that experience um, and it's funny but not funny because God kept repeating Exodus and he kept repeating Moses and he calls me his little Moses um, well he hasn't called me little Moses in a while so and part of it is because I've now walked into my um, my land filled with milk and honey but it doesn't look like I'm in the land of milk and honey <laughs> um, and I'll explain why so I'm living in my car, okay? Uh, back in October, God told me, quit your job. I knew it was coming, um, but I didn't know how. I thought I was going to be more prepared. I thought I was going to be one foot in or one, one in the process of being where I'm supposed to be. But God doesn't work that way because it's all on faith. 
He strengthens your faith by the steps that you have to take when you don't know what's on the other side. So I left. Like he told me, quit your job. You know, don't go to work today. I'm like, okay. I didn't question it. I'm like, yeah, God's got a plan. I trust him. But this is where prophesying in part comes in. So he didn't tell me that by not working, paying rent for November, there would be no money in December and I would have to leave my apartment. He didn't tell me that. He didn't show me that. He just showed me that he was going to take care of me. So I completely trusted. And this is where Satan takes advantage. Okay. Um, so I took the leap of faith. I left my job because I knew he has another position for me. When that position was going to come up, I didn't know. But I took that leap of faith. Um, he told me what to pay with the money that I was still making from my job because I still had a couple paychecks. Um, so I paid rent and I, he had me go out and, you know, completely had me doing things that I was just like, okay. Um, in hindsight, I was like, had I known, I would have prepared better. I would have been, but then it's out of my hands, not out of his. Um, so I packed up all my things like he told me to. He told me when to put them in my car. He told me what time I was supposed to leave. Um, and it did, it was full circle. Because when I left the wilderness, or what I called the wilderness, because it was, it, it was the wilderness, but I needed to finish the wilderness in a different location. Because that is what my path was supposed to be. Because I was removed from my promised land um, by people who were raising me and moved to a land of lack. You know, there was very little water. It just, it represented the wilderness that the Israelites went through to get out of Egypt. And, you know, <clears throat> the reason they went through 40 years of, of experiencing the wilderness was due to the fact that they kept um, getting upset. They kept getting, um, returning back to old behaviors. And I remember uh, listening to was it a prophet? I can't remember. I remember listening to someone who was talking about Exodus and the pruning that the Israelites had to go through. And the reason that God didn't just deliver them to the land of milk and honey was because he had to remove every idea every behavior every um because they were in in egypt for generations so they had picked up the behaviors and the attitudes and the faith um the way that the the egyptians faith was they picked up idolatry they picked up things that were above god and so God had to clear that out. He had to wipe them clean, you know, prune them back. Um, if you guys saw a video of mine that I did earlier where I show a plant and how far back it had been pruned. And that's how far back God had to prune the Israelites. But even then he knew that after pruning them as much as he did, that they were still going to revert back to some of their old behaviors. Even after he delivered them into their land of milk and honey. Because it wasn't the core remnant people that he was looking for. He was looking for us. So he knew by doing all that work 
all that time in the wilderness that the fruit that was going to be plant the seeds that were going to be planted then would eventually lead to a harvest of a true remnant by choice meaning that those of us that are turning to god are turning to god not because we're afraid of him not because we have nothing better to do with our time it is because in our hearts in our our bloodline has grown up in such a way that in our hearts we were born loving god we were our spirit was so filled with the love of god that when we were born even before we could speak even before we could see even before we could do anything we already had the love of god in us so that's what he's been trying to plant those seeds so that eventually you we would get to a place where the children that were born would be true believers true in faith and he wouldn't have to take us through all this wilderness and prune us all the way back because in our hearts we would be a hundred percent already his and from our stance will come even more faithful children because we are going to ingrain in our children the love of God from the beginning and we are going to encourage the gifts God has for with for them and we are going to pray over them and we are going to dedicate them to him and we are going to make sure that they follow the path that God set for them and that they have a natural born love of God so that is where he's been coming to that is where all the work from all those generations all that destruction that he had to do was to get to this point and he knew it was going to happen because remember he's the beginning and the end he's already been to the end he already knows what he needs to do that's why satan can never win because satan can't go to the end and say oh this step that step <laughs> you know it doesn't matter what we choose because as soon as we choose god already knows because he saw it play out and he changes the course of that decision depending on how he wants it to go because he already knows how it's going to go so well i did not realize i was there. Yeah, and you'll hear a lot of prophets say that that they don't realize they're going to go in a direction because god plants those seeds in our minds those thoughts and as we get the, the the more into your walk you get with god the faster those seeds will come and the faster you'll get into the fruitfulness and you'll speak faster and faster and you're like wow like before i used to struggle like i used to think about this and i had to stop and and now it's just flowing and so back to exodus so the israelites were going to return back to their ways when they were in egypt and god knew this so he had to go through generations to find the ones that would be true to him and so for those of you who are just starting out in your in my i'm gonna have to make a part two um so be looking for that may this word have blessed you and given you some clarity some guidance but look for a part two to this video there will be more information regarding transition and wilderness and experiences of what i went through in my wilderness um and yes i am living in a car for right now but i am working and people who look at me they don't know because the way god is doing this it doesn't look like i live in my car it doesn't look 
like you would expect someone living without a four walls around them to love. So this is as far as he wants me to go with this video. So I will be making a part two. May God bless you, protect you, guide you, and seek him in everything. In the name of my Lord Jesus, amen.